Hey guys, it's Meal Before Me, and I'm back with another food review. This time we're checking out Cook Unity, a culinary collective that delivers fresh, ready to eat meals to your door. Now, I reviewed a few popular meal kits like HelloFresh, as well as some low or no prep options from places like Home Chef. But Cook Unity is pretty unique because their meals are whipped up by chefs in a community kitchen, then packaged for you to heat and eat at home. They deliver to most of the United States, and they're the very first chef to consumer platform, at least according to them. So I'm excited to try it out. And as always, I'm going to walk you through everything from ordering and the unboxing to my taste test in real time. To get started, head to cookunity.com and enter your zip code. Like I've mentioned before, most of these companies offer some kind of sign-up deal, and Cook Unity was no different. They were running a special for 50% off your first two weeks. Gotta love that. Next, you select your membership plan, choosing from four, six, eight, 12 or 16 meals per week, which is the widest range I think I've seen in any service I've reviewed so far. And the cost is cheaper the bigger the plan you choose. Since I'm the only one trying this out, I'm choosing eight meals. That's at least one for each day. But it's important to note that unlike the meal kits I've tried, Cook Unity is priced by meal, not by serving. And each one of these meals is meant to be a single serving. And I'll get into that more a little later. For now, let's move on. Next, you enter your contact information to create an account, or you can sign up using Google, Apple, or that company that might as well be Voldemort because I hate saying its name. Let's call it Haysnook or Feta. Once you're in, you get to choose up to three of your go-to proteins. I'm a beefy, chickeny, salmony kind of girl, so I'm going with steak, poultry, and seafood, despite salmon pretty much being the only seafood I eat. And remember that this doesn't lock you out of anything on the menu, it's just to personalize your recommendations. Finally, we're at the fun part, choosing our meals. And the biggest difference between this and any meal kit service I've tried is the sheer number of options you have. There are 400 meals to choose from on this week's menu alone, compared to the 20 to 40 or so recipe options you get with a typical service. But before you get too excited, the number of options available to you depends on your location. I'm in New York, which is where the company is based, so I'm probably seeing the max of what they put out. That said, there are plenty of people through Throughout the country who say they have at least one or 200 options as well because they have Cook Unity kitchens nearby. So don't assume that you need to be on the East Coast to get this degree of variety. You won't know until you enter your zip code. So I'm placing this order on Thursday, April 20th, and it set the delivery date to Wednesday, April 26th. You can click to edit that delivery date if you need to. I like getting these reviews done as quickly as possible once I get it in my head to do them, so I left it on Wednesday. Looking at the menu, you can sort the meals by a number of categories, including vegan, low carb or low calorie, gluten or dairy free, keto, paleo, and even one I've never seen on a service before, but that I personally appreciate, low sodium. It's here that I wanna mention the website being a bit of a mess in terms of functionality though. <laughs> Trying to scroll that bar was a nightmare on desktop and I couldn't even log into the site on mobile. So I definitely think Cook Unity could use some web unity. Beyond that, the menu itself is clean and simple. All of the meals listed cost the same, except for the ones highlighted in black as chef specials, which range from costing an additional three to seven bucks. Clicking on a meal gives you an overview of the chef who created it, their inspiration for it, the ingredients, nutritional info, heating instructions, and macronutrient ratios. You can also check out the customer reviews. Now, I'll give you the usual disclaimers that I don't have any specific dietary needs, just things I don't like to eat, so I started with the meat category and went from there. One thing I really didn't like about their menu setup was that I couldn't pick more meals than the plan I chose, which meant that once I picked eight, if I found another meal I really liked, I couldn't add it without removing something else first. That was frustrating given how many meals there were to choose from. A better setup would be allowing customers to pick or at least bookmark all of the meals that interest them. Then when they're done browsing, they can whittle it down to the ones they're going to keep instead of forcing us to do that on the fly. It made choosing meals take way longer than it should should have because I had to write meals down that I wasn't sure about. On the bright side, being spoiled for choice meant I didn't struggle finding things I'd like, which is a recurring issue with meal kits. With them, things are so limited by variety or price that I always feel like I'm settling for something. I didn't feel like that here at all. And deleting meals was convenient thanks to the view selection button at the bottom of the screen that neatly pops out the list of what I've chosen so far. 
After much deliberation, I finally had my eight meals that I know I'm going to mispronounce. Beef burrilla quesadillas, Korean flank steak rice bowl, bulgogi japchae, grilled pork chop with rosemary cream sauce, grilled pork chop with bacon gremolata, paprika salmon, hoisin glazed baby back ribs, and crispy picadillo style beef tacos. Full disclosure, if I wasn't doing this review, I wouldn't have chosen pork chops at all, but I wanted to have an example of pork to show you. I also meant to swap one of the chops with a chicken dish so you could see a variety of meats, but I forgot. Once your meals are picked, you enter your address and any delivery instructions. My total for the week for eight meals, each one serving, was $61.79, which is about what I'm comfortable spending on these reviews. You follow that up by making your payment by credit card, though like other services, the actual invoice is for the Friday before the scheduled week. Since I placed this order on a Thursday, it meant I got charged the next day. Regardless, that was it for the ordering, so future me will be back for the unboxing. In the meantime, if you enjoy my style of food reviews and want to see more of them, please like this video. It tells YouTube that my channel is worth watching. They will not show it to more people otherwise, and I really want to grow it this year so I can afford to bring you more food reviews you'll love. So the delivery arrived on April 26th as scheduled without issue. Given the fiasco I had with Axel Hire in my Home Chef video, I checked Cook Unity's delivery method before choosing to review it. Thankfully, they use UPS and FedEx. In my case, UPS. The box was neatly taped, measuring 17 inches high, 12 and a half inches wide, and 16 and a half inches long. And the delivery tracker said it was 25 pounds. Opening it, there was a thick thermal lining called Climacell made out of a starch-based foam covered in this papery material. It says it repels water, which it might, but it definitely doesn't repel tears. Inside that was a non-toxic, water-soluble, Fidelity Freeze cold pack that was still frozen. And underneath were my eight meals, still refrigerated and neatly stacked on one another. Each package was the same size, measuring roughly eight and a half by six inches, which was small enough for me to fit them in the door of my fridge. There was also a piece of cardboard with a promo printed on it. I flipped that in a corner somewhere and forgot. But enough with the unboxing, because you know the question we all need answered is, how does it taste? And it's about time for lunch, so let's get these meals ready to eat. To the table! In reviews where I have to cook the meals, I stick to the maximum time the instructions state to keep my comparisons consistent. Here, the meals are already fully cooked, so I don't need to evaluate their recommended times. I'm just going to heat them up until they're proper hot. They provide you with both oven and microwave heating instructions. I want this to be as quick and easy as possible, so I'll be using the microwave. Since everything was refrigerated, not frozen, it'll only take a few minutes each. I won't be listing the ingredients for each meal this time because some of them are simple while others read like a description of an empty chair in a Victorian novel, and this isn't story time. If you want to see what's in them, I'll link to the recipes in the box. Each package has a weight printed on it, so you know I'm breaking out the scale, but I won't bother subtracting the weight of the packaging because the packaging is the same for all of them, so you'll still get a sense of which ones have more or less. Speaking of packaging, I have no idea why one of them is blue and the others aren't. Maybe it's by recipe, like blue for seafood, fuchsia for meat, I don't know. But as always, I'll be rating the meals by taste, smell, texture, and repeatability, meaning would I eat it again? First up is the paprika salmon. It says 13.51 ounces and weighs 17.3 ounces. I love that for me. Let's heat it up. Schwabow! Check it out guys, we got the first meal. And of course, because this is the uh, taste test in real time portion, you already know the deal. This is gonna be the portion where the audio may not be as good because I'm not really facing the microphone, um, but this looks really fresh. It smells really fresh. And I really do like the fact that on each package, it tells you when it was prepared. I am trying this right now on April 27th. And like I probably already mentioned, I received it on April 26th, but it was was packed on April 24th. And here is the sauce that was also in there. Um, of course, you were supposed to remove that before heating it up and then pour this on top. So I'm gonna do that with you guys, but actually before I do that, I think I'm just gonna dive into this. Um, you can see that it's really, if I can find where I'm pointing at the camera, <laughs> uh, you can see that it's actually really uh, juicy. It doesn't look like it's overcooked. So I'm gonna go ahead right now, see what this is like. Oh, that's really good. 
That is really nice. Like, it looks almost like it has sort of a dry rub thing going on. It is a little bit of a char. And yet, you can see as I break this up, how it flakes off. Uh, so it's absolutely not overcooked. Hopefully you can see that shine off of there. So I'm happy with this, like without whatever that sauce is going to be. See if I can get a carrot. So I could poke into that. I'm not gonna say as easily as I normally like, um, but again, I'm not really into like really crunchy, crispy vegetables. Let me just give this a taste. And yeah, it's exactly what I expected. It's just, you know, veggies. If you would just made this yourself. So that's fine. So let's see what the star of the show is here. It looks kind of like pesto. I don't know if that's what it is. Let's see if I can just taste this by itself, put some on my finger. That is actually very heavy in the oil flavor, not so much of whatever the herbs are in uh, in there, but that's fine. I'm gonna just dump that all over here because you know what? Go big or go home with these reviews, guys. I am gonna say that for each of these, because they're fresh, they really do smell like, you know, if you're at a restaurant and somebody just sat something down in front of you. So for this one, I'm gonna give it a four out of five for smell, really just because that sauce that I put on it there, oh uh, God, it smells so heavily of like olive oil. I do like how it adds even more moisture to this and how it, it adds a little bit of cohesive flavoring to everything because everything's now coated with the same stuff. But of course, let me eat the salmon because that's the big deal. All right, so I will say this. I do get a little bit of the herbiness. Am I going to say that it adds anything to it in terms of like flavor dimension? Not really. You know, the taste of like that char and everything on the salmon, um, and the seasoning of that stood out more. But you know, keep in mind that I'm also someone who's not really into drizzling olive oil on top of things, period. I will still give this maybe a four and a half out of five for flavor, you know, post oiling. Texture, I'm gonna give it a five out of five. Again, the green beans are a little bit crunchy for my taste, but that's just a preference thing. And I guess for the important one, repeatability, meaning would I eat it again? Yes. Though with the number of options they have, I would get anything that has salmon again, and then try to maybe get something that has more interesting sides because this is delicious, but if you're going to have somebody else cook something for you and it's all going to cost the same price no matter what, you might as well get something that's a little fancier or you know get something that's a little outside of your comfort zone. Uh, but we are off to a very good start. So on to the next one. Next is the crispy picadillo style beef tacos. It says 13.51 ounces and weighs 14.1. Let's heat it up. Schwabing! All right, we've got these tacos. And you know, before I go ahead and assemble them, I did want to show you this. They didn't exactly survive the trip. You know, they were kind of broken. It looks like there was maybe, yeah, looks like there were three. And the one that was, you know, sitting closest to the food, that one was a little bit moist. So you can see like right there how it's almost like it's a little slimy. Um, now you do take these and the sauces out before heating the uh, little stuff, the little filling up. So I did that. So, you know, just letting you know that that's how the tacos came. And then this is what is left. Oh, this is about as good as I can do <laughs> under the circumstances. I mean, if I put this on a plate and stuff, I could have made it look more uh, palatable, I'm sure. But that's not really the point of this. The point of this is giving you the most, I think, authentic experience of what this is like. And um, I feel like there will be a lot of people who order this and they just want to heat it up and eat it and they don't want to, you know, plate it and stuff. But that said, if you did want to plate it, the fact that, you know, the shells were all pretty much broken means that you still likely wouldn't be able to do it the way that you want and, you know, in a way that's maybe pretty. So I am going to say immediately that for texture, I'm going to give it like a two because a part of this dish is having the crispy tacos. So when you have the tacos that number one, aren't even crispy and number two, uh, don't really hold together, that sort of defeats the purpose. But you know what? That's fine because that's not the only metric here. Now, it comes with these sauces and I don't know what they're made out of just because the ingredient list on this particular recipe was insane. Oh, okay. So that tastes sort of like peppery, oniony with a little bit of heat. So I'll put that. And then this one looks like it might just be like sour cream probably. Yeah, that's what that tastes like. So fine. So of course the instructions say that you are to top everything with this, but what I'm going to do first 
is I'm going to take this <laughs> very gingerly with a piece of paper towel and I'm going to bite this just to see what this tastes like with the filling and without any of the sauces first. Okay, that's really good. The fact that this isn't crispy, that it did come a little soft, actually works for me. Again, it's just that it may not work for you. I had to ding its points because it's supposed to be crispy, but I like it like this. That filling though, oh my God, that has so much flavor. There's a little bit of sweetness to it. It has a little more dimension than like your usual, I think like taco kind of seasoning that you might get if you just got like a packet seasoning or something like that. It really does taste kind of fresher and homemade. I feel like that's gonna be a recurring thing <laughs> for this entire uh, taste test is that it tastes fresh, cause it is. Um, but also I noticed that the beans come through a little bit on their own. I could absolutely just down all of this right now. In fact, I might, I did not have lunch yet, so this might just be my lunch. But yeah, so right out of the gate, I gave it what a two for texture. I'm gonna give it a five out of five for flavor. This is fantastic. But now we're gonna go ahead and top it with this sauce. And you know, I'm not a fan of heat without flavor, but this has so much flavor. All right, that's a perfect bite. I'm just gonna use this instead of the paper towel to keep it from dripping. Mm. That is a perfect amount of heat. So if you're somebody who doesn't like spicy food, this would not be too spicy for you. I can't rave about this enough. That's gone. <laughs> so I think I probably shouldn't have to say what my rating is gonna be for repeatability. Would I eat it again? Absolutely. Even taking into account the fact that the taco shells came just in ruins, they were absolutely destroyed. <laughs> This still tastes so good. And again, unlike any of the other food delivery things that I've reviewed so far, all of these are one serving. That's what each of these is. They are meant to be one serving per container. So all of this is for one person. And I definitely think that's enough. I can't rave about this service enough already. And I'm only two recipes in out of the eight. So I'm looking forward to trying the rest of them. Let's go. Up next is a Korean flank steak. It says 14.53 ounces and weighs 12. Not happy with that, sir, but let's heat it up. Boop. All right, look at that. Now, just like the other ones, it had the sauce that you had to remove before heating this up, and then you're supposed to drizzle this on top. But I'm definitely gonna go ahead and taste this before adding that. Now, if you look at the steak, you can see that it's pretty juicy, uh, or hopefully you can see how juicy it is. You can see that sheen there. With some of the strips, you can see it's a little bit pink in the center, so you know it hasn't been cooked to hell and back. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and just try this piece by itself so I can get a feel for whatever the flavor is before putting the sauce on. Okay, I'm actually not sure if like this maybe was marinated because it does have a little hint of something, but mostly it just tastes like steak. So I feel like they probably want this sauce to play a big role in this, but I would say that if I got the steak without any kind of sauce, I would be absolutely thrilled. The texture is great. I mean, I'm gonna try the rice just so I can be fair with the full texture rating. There's a little piece of onion on this. Let's see. Okay, so I think the rice is well cooked. I mean, and this, the asparagus, they could have maybe not even bothered with this, honestly. It's like one, two, three, four, five, little tiny itty bitty pieces. The tiniest, skinniest little asparagus I've ever seen. This asparagus has been on a diet for the last 10 years. I'm going to give it a four out of five for texture because this flank steak is actually quite tender. And while I think the rice is well cooked, I think for some people it may not be, you know, as fluffy and light as they would like. And of course this asparagus, as kind of wimpy as it looks, it is still a little bit crunchy for me, a little bit chewy. So I'm gonna give it a four out of five for texture. For whiff, and I don't know if I did that for the last one, maybe a three out of five. And it's not because it doesn't smell good. It's just that, you know, unlike the other dishes that were very aromatic, I mean, this just smells like beef. So I'm gonna give it a middle of the road score for that. For taste, I would give it a four out of five right now. But of course we have the sauce and I do not want to cheat. This is a part of the recipe. You're supposed to put this on top. So let's go ahead and a drizzle. Like I said, go bigger ho home, put it all in there. Okay, <laughs> it's not like it's going anywhere else. Uh, so now we've got that and we're gonna now taste this while drizzled in that delicious, delicious sauce, whatever it is, I'm assuming it's soy sauce based, but oh yeah. Yeah, that adds like just the right amount of salty sweetness 
four out of five on taste without the sauce, five out of five with it. I will say though that if you don't like the saltiness of soy sauce, you may not want to use as much of the sauce as I did because it basically just tastes like soy sauce. Maybe there might be a little hint of sesame in there, but it, you know, it would be the equivalent of just dumping a bunch of soy sauce on top of this, which depending on the quality of the soy sauce is great. So you may or may not like that. And for repeatability, would I eat it again? We've got another yes for that, folks. This is absolutely delicious. Man, I can't express enough how pleased I am with this service so far, but we've still got a lot more to get through, so let's go. Next, we have the hoisin glazed ribs. It says 16.01 ounces and weighs 12.4. Another disappointing number, but let's heat it up. No, 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 baby back. Now I will say up front that this one also had a sauce that I had to remove first, but I'm a little confused because the instructions said to remove the pickle cup. And there were some pickles here, but I don't see any pickles in this. So I did take the pickles out, you know, before I heated it up, but I, that makes me wonder if this is not supposed to be in there. I'm assuming it is, yeah, I, I don't know. A little bit of pickling, a little bit of sour vinegary things um, really goes well to cut through any kind of fattiness from things like ribs. So I'm excited to try this, but like with the other ones, I'm gonna try the ribs and the rice by itself. And then I'm gonna put whatever the sauce is on top. So you can see that sweat. You see that sheen, all right? And these are actually quite tiny. There are only two in here. I don't eat ribs often, but when I do, I could probably eat like 10,000 racks at once. Let me just give this a bite, see how tender it is. All right, well, this is the first one that I'm not exactly impressed with. Let me try this piece. Hold on. <laughs> Okay, that's better. I didn't want to say anything unfair, but basically this little rib piece here has so little meat on it that basically when I bit into it, mostly I was just getting something sort of gristly and almost burnt tasting with whatever that glaze is. I mean, you can see that's incredibly dark compared to this as well. So this, I tasted a little bit more of the flavor and you can see um, where I took a bite, like it's actually very tender. So it is a little disappointing if there isn't consistent with what you get, you know, when you order this. Like, are you always going to get two ribs? You know, are you going to get three sometimes? You know, are they always going to be this size or are they going to be this size? Because there's an obvious difference. But let me go ahead and taste the rice really quickly before I talk about texture. Oh, okay. I would say that this rice is better cooked than the last one. Uh, I'm not going to bother tasting the pickles or again, this like peasly little bit of vegetables, whatever that is. Who cares about that? <laughs> but now I'm going to go ahead and try this sauce. The color makes me worry that it's gonna be hot and in a way I don't like. So I'm just gonna put a little tiny bit. And also I feel like I can see like pepper flakes in there. So we'll just do like that much. Just a little dab will do ya. All right, and I'll just close that right back up <laughs> and take another bite of this with that sauce on it. You can see it's like very red. This is gonna be hot. I already know this is gonna be spicy. The question is, is it gonna be too spicy for me? Let's see. Okay, well, it is spicy. Oh, oh God. <laughs> okay, well, that's sort of on the border of spicy for me. And uh, I didn't cough like that because of the spice, mostly. Like, I also cough like that because I think I, I inhaled a piece of rice. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that, yeah, I, I will say that the flavor of that is very good. It adds spice, but also adds sweetness to it. And I think that balances out like the whole flavor profile, but the heat is the kind of heat I don't like because it's lingering. I will say that if you're not bothered by heat, if you're not bothered by spice, that's an incredible sauce. So I guess going through all this for texture, I'll give it a four out of five. Again, the rice was perfectly cooked. The veggies are actually a lot softer. They're not really crunchy in a way I don't like, so I appreciated that. And again, like if you get a rib that's like this, that actually has meat on it, that is very tender, like perfectly cooked. It's just this. If you get one that's, you know, that barely has anything on it, you can see it's like very gristly and almost like a, a burnt quality to it. So I'm going to give it a four out of five for texture. I would have said five out of five if not for this. Like it smells great. For, you know, the more I smell it actually, <laughs> I think I might give it a three. It doesn't, I don't know. It's not a pleasant smell. Like it's sweet, but it also smells kind of earthy in a way that's personally not my thing. Now for flavor, I'm going to 
rating it a four out of five. Um, and you know, that sauce was fantastic. That really took it up another level. It's just, I don't like that kind of heat. So for repeatability, would I get this again? I'm going to say no, because what if I order this again and the next time, you know, I got two ribs and they were both just like this you know, just burnt nothings, right? <laughs> then I would feel like I wasted my money. So it's not to do with the flavor or the texture or anything. Um, it's just, I don't like the fact that I don't know how consistent this would be. And because of that, I don't think I would want to risk getting it again, but still it is a very tasty dish. On to the next one. Next is the grilled pork chop with bacon gremolata. It says 15.52 ounces and weighs 13.5. Hmm. Let's heat it up. Bam, 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 bam. A gremolata, gremolata, gremolata. So if nothing else, this one's gonna win for being the most colorful meal I've had so far. And like with the other ones, it had a sauce. This was, I believe if I wanna look at the package, a balsamic mustard glaze. But like with all the other ones, I'm gonna go ahead and try to taste this by itself first. Now I'm a sucker for red cabbage. I really do like it, especially if it's just vinegary. So I do like that there was a lot of this, but the fact that this is a pork chop, if I can show you like the thickness of it and see if I can, lift this on its side. So you can see that looks like it's about um, maybe an inch and a half, which is, that's a, that's a pretty meaty chop. And pork chops, again, they're notoriously easy to dry out, like to overcook. So it looks like these are sliced almonds, maybe. I will say I'm not a fan of mixing like nuts with meat. It's just not really my thing. Um, I do like almonds though, but I can already tell I'm not gonna be a fan of that. So let's just jump into this. Now I'm using my plastic utensils, my favorite color combination, black and white. I feel like it's not as tender as some of the pork chops that have come in other meal kit services that I've gotten. It also looks a lot drier. So I'm gonna taste that right now. Okay, so surprisingly, it's not as dry as it looks. And also it has like a nice flavor to it. it it's a little bit vinegary. Let's give a taste to the cabbage here um, because again like it's mixed in with the almonds and i tried that one little almond sliver and i did not like how that tasted so i already know that this is not going to rate as highly as uh, some of the other ones just because it includes things i don't like but let me taste the cabbage okay yeah so the red cabbage is good you know as long as i don't <laughs> bite into a piece of the almond so we're gonna go ahead and dump this and since i don't think this is spicy it's just balsamic we're gonna go ahead and now let's take a little tasty poo. Don't say poo while you're eating. <laughs> it's not exactly an appetizing word to say when you're trying to consume something. I will say that this sauce, like this glaze rather, is almost kind of the consistency of a gravy, which I like. And it also looks like a brown gravy, but let's give it a try. Oh no. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so... <laughs> I don't know what happened <laughs> because the pork chop had a no, okay taste. And then this, let me taste the sauce by itself. Oh no, it's 100% the sauce. Yeah, that, uh, I'm glad I didn't put too much on that. I think that glaze is disgusting. I'm just gonna say it outright. It tastes like dirty balsamic. Like it doesn't have, you know, that bite, I guess, of mustard. It's just like it has the stank of mustard. I don't know how to even explain to you what's going on. If I could wash this off, I would. That's how bad I think it is. So <laughs> uh, my recommendation, I mean, you know, you have taste buds that are the same as mine, which be to not do what I just did. Do not pour all of that on there. Let's see if it blends a little bit better with the cabbage. Yeah, there's a bunch of that on there. Mm. I mean, honestly, yes. It's like the vinegariness of the cabbage overpowers whatever the heck is going on with that glaze. But with the pork chop, absolutely not. So I think I can give you my verdict on this just rapid fire for texture. I'm going to give it a four out of five because even though the pork looks kind of dry, it actually wasn't and it wasn't that chewy, though it's still not like my favorite thing. For smell, I'm going to give it probably like a five out of five because it does have a very nice vinegary bite to its scent. You know, when you smell it, it really kind of singes your nose almost. And I just happen to like that smell. So I'll give it a five out of five for whiff. For taste, I'm going to unfortunately drop it down to a three because of the way that this sauce blends with the pork chop. It just is not 
good. <laughs> that's just that's the only thing I can say. And so I guess for repeatability, would I eat it again? The answer is no, uh, because when I get something that's like basically a protein and there's some kind of veggie, this really needs to stand out. Like the meat has to be the thing that I enjoy most. And with this, it's not, I just put it that way. And again, you know, your mileage may vary with that opinion because I'm not that big of a fan of pork chops to begin with. And then, you know, just that sauce put it over the edge for me. So I would not get this again. And I want to say, yeah, maybe it's kind of the low point of the review so far. But the red cabbage though, oh, the texture and flavor on this, amazing. Like I could just eat all of this and then give the pork chop away to somebody who would like it more. <laughs> on to the next one. Here we've got the beef burrilla quesadillas. It says 16.01 ounces and weighs 16.9 ounces. Good for you, quesadillas. Let's heat it up. <laughs> Now, I like this, you know, like I said, uh, I'm not really into crispy tacos, but quesadillas I love. And one thing you can see here, if I can separate these, it looks like there are three here. If you look here, you can see, ooh, that one's a little greasy. <laughs> but you can see that they're actually already filled, which is nice. That one had a lot of grease. Let's look at this to see if this one's less greasy. Yeah, look at, like, look at that meat. This is what I like to see, guys. And like with the other ones, it came with a sauce that had to be removed before heating. This, I believe, is like a little avocado sauce or a little guacamole kind of thing. And then we have this one, which is the Berea broth. I'm not really sure how it's pronounced, but this actually had to be heated up with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and try tasting this without any of the sauces first. So I'll just pick the greasy one because why not? And I'm just gonna bite right into the meatiest part of it. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's good. Now, I don't know if it's gonna come through on camera, but first of all, like that meat is incredibly tender. And even with the greasiness of this, like this still retains some of its chew. Now let's go ahead and add the sauce. Just add a little bit here. I'm gonna try the vegetables too. I don't know what that is there. Uh, I don't like avocado, but I am going to add it. And before I bite that again, I'm gonna just see what the vegetables taste like in case they're pickled or something. That's actually quite pleasant. It has like a lightly oiled, very lightly pickled kind of flavor to it. Big fan of the veggies. Uh, so yeah, like I said, I don't really like avocado anything. Look at that. Look at that texture. Oof. Let's mix that up a little bit. And you know what? Let's double team it there. Let's put some of that there, some of that here, and then bite into both. <laughs> I can let you know which one tastes better. Take a nice healthy bite of that. Okay, I actually like both of those toppings. I feel like the avocado sauce, it's not like guacamole. It doesn't have that nasty aftertaste that I personally don't like. That burrilla sauce, it has like this earthy, almost tomato flavor to it, which is interesting. And that actually did add quite a bit to the taste of the meat, which again is just very tender and juicy and wonderful. I could eat that all day. Uh, but this is definitely one of those things where I would say, that, you know, putting these sauces together with this will add to the experience, absolutely. So I will give you very quickly my thoughts on this then. For smell, I wanna say four out of five because when I smell it, I smell more of the vegetables than I do anything else. And while vegetables taste great, they don't smell like much of anything to me. So four out of five for smell. For texture, I'm gonna give it a five out of five. Everything was really tender had a really nice uh, toothiness to it. Uh, even this, which again is not really my thing, I would say that it wasn't enough to detract from like the whole deal. For flavor again, five out of five, because all of this is delicious. Like even the thing I thought I wouldn't like because I don't like avocados, even that was great. And for repeatability, would I eat it again? Yes, absolutely. I would recommend getting this. I think two for one serving, this might be a little too much for me. <laughs> and I'm not saying that because I'm a light eater. It's just that this is really kind of dense and rich. And I just feel like this, this is enough. This is more than enough. Anybody who was like, oh, I don't know, is that going to be enough food? I think all of these are enough food, but especially this one, I think it's a little bit too much for me. Um, but I absolutely love this. I would definitely get it again. Five out of five all across the board. Good job. Next is the Bulgogi Chapche. It says 11.01 .01 ounces and weighs 13.3 ounces. A little redemption with the weights there. Now let's heat it up. 
Bull Goge. So, uh, like the other one, I don't know why that made me laugh. <laughs> but uh, like the other ones, this did have a sauce that I had to take out before I heated this. But unlike the other ones, this one says that I should actually pour the sauce in and mix it around before eating. So I'm going to consider that to be a part of the dish. And because of that, I'm not going to bother tasting this first. But I am going to show you just the, the little paltry bit of meat that came with this. And don't get me wrong, like I love glass noodles. So I am just gonna say that treat this like the noodles are the point of this dish and that this is just a little treat, you know? The meat's just a little, little uh, treat on top, but I'm not going to bother. Well, you know what? Maybe I'll just taste a little piece of the meat before I I'm gonna get a little bit and uh... oh yeah. That's seasoned fantastically. Like whatever the sauce is, you don't even need that. And I can tell you like five out of five for whiff because when I pull this out of the microwave, like it just hit me with the most delicious, oh, I don't know what, but it just, it smells really good. And it says that the vegetables are charred. You know, you don't really see very many of them, but there is sort of a charred scent to it. So I'm gonna just jump on that rating like prematurely at this point. Just say that like for whiff, I give it a five out of five. This smells great. Let's go ahead. I'm already gonna say five out of five for flavor without the sauce, but it's not meant to be eaten without the sauce. <laughs> so, you know, I'm gonna be fair. Texture, I might say that the noodles taste a little bit starchy, um, but let's see if this sauce here that it came with, if that's gonna rectify any of that. That meat though is seasoned fantastically. Like this whole thing is fantastic. I do not need this, uh, but let's go ahead and do what the instructions say. Let me just taste this first. Okay, that doesn't have that much of a flavor. It's a little bit sweet. Uh, it almost tastes like if you had beef broth and then added a little bit of sugar to it. That's kind of what this tastes like. Actually, maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's a little bit of midden and that's like the sweetness that I'm tasting, but it definitely tastes like it has a little bit of sugar or something in it. Um, and also something a little bit alcoholic, but either way, I'm gonna dump that here because the taste is not offensive enough. It's just that this tasted so fantastic that I had to taste this sauce first before dumping it in and mixing it in case this was disgusting. I did not want to ruin this because again, these are my actual meals, okay? I'm not just doing this for funsies. When I order these things, this is what I eat. So, you know, I don't want to mess anything up on purpose. So let's just dump all of that in there. All right, let's give her another taste with everything together. We get a little bit of meat. We get that big hunkin' chunkin'. Oh God, that's so good. And it's not that the sauce made it taste better. It's more like the sauce made it taste really good in a different way. You know, it just added a slightly different flavor profile to this. But listen, like I think you can already tell what my last ratings are gonna be. Five out of five for taste and for repeatability. Would I eat it again? Yes. This is fantastic. And because it's noodles, it's gonna be a little bit more filling. Again, go into this for the noodles, not for the meat. There's not a lot of it, but what little bit there is, is definitely well seasoned, definitely adds to the dish as a whole. So I don't think you're gonna feel like you're missing anything by not having more meat mixed into this. And you know, again, as far as the texture goes, I think that sauce did kind of wash away some of that sense of starchiness that the noodles had before that, but they still taste like they're very close, just like right on the tip of being too mushy. Either way, this is another one of my favorites, but it's time to move on. And last, but maybe also least, because pork chops aren't really my thing, it's the grilled chop with rosemary cream sauce. It says 13.02 ounces and weighs 11.7 ounces. Let's heat it up. Ta-da! So we finally come to the last taste test of the video. And you know, as you can see, this is very simple. It's just a grilled pork chop and Brussels sprouts. Now, this also came with a sauce like the other ones, but unlike the other ones, it said that you should top it with the sauce before heating it up. That's why you don't see it. Uh, so you can kind of make out a little bit of the white creaminess that's on this. I feel like heating it up on this thinned it out more than I would have liked. So it almost looks like you just put like rosemary butter or something on this rather than an actual cream sauce. Um, but you know, we're gonna just jump into this. We're not gonna waste too much time. Brussels sprouts, I do like, uh, but I only like them when they're again, not as crispy as these already seem like they are. I'm gonna give it a try. I mean, there's nothing special about the way these are seasoned. I don't even think there's pepper on them. It just tastes like it has a little bit of salt. Though texture wise, it was a little hard for me to get through like that outer skim. 
So I don't know if I like that, but let's go ahead and try this chop. And again, like it just, it looks like it's very difficult for the fork to go through. You can get a look at the thickness of it. Yeah, I can already tell this is probably gonna be very chewy. Again, it looks dry, but it could be deceptive like the other one where it doesn't taste as dry as it looks. But I definitely think it's gonna taste chewy. Let's see. The flavor is fine. You know, it's okay. It's just grilled. There's no special interesting seasoning to it. That cream sauce, I feel, kind of adds nothing. Like, if I even dip this into it, get a lot of it, yeah, it's still basically, it almost just tastes like butter. So I don't really know what the point of that was. I feel like they could have done more with that sauce to make it like really rich and interesting, especially for the rest of the dish itself to be so simplistic. We do not need to belabor the point, as they say. For a whiff, I'm going to give it yeah, a three out of five. You know, it doesn't smell good, doesn't smell bad. Again, it's just the middle of the road. For texture, I'm going to also give it a three out of five. I feel like the Brussels sprouts were a little too difficult for me to bite through, that they were a little chewy. And the same goes for the pork chop. I feel like it's a little bit overcooked. And for flavor, you know, I'm also gonna give it a three out of five. It's not that it tastes bad, but it's very bland compared to everything else that I tried. And again, that's sort of the nature of what this is. I mean, it's just a grilled chop and Brussels sprouts, right? But again, because it had that rosemary cream sauce, I feel like that's where they could have really added a punch of flavor and richness to it. And you know, they did not. And so for repeatability, would I eat it again? I'm sure you can all guess the answer is no. But if you're somebody who likes chops, you know, and you don't feel like you need something to be exciting for your palate in order for you to enjoy it, then you may still like this. But for me, I feel like even if I didn't feel like the flavor was underwhelming, I feel like the texture just isn't where I want it to be. So not exactly ending on the best note, <laughs> but at least overall, I did have a nice diverse range of recipes to try. So I can't complain. Getting into my final thoughts, I have two major gripes I need to start with. The first is that Cook Unity has more than a meal plan. I know that sounds like a good thing, except that I wasn't shown any of it until after placing the order for the meals. It's like they want to steer people towards this one thing they offer so badly that they bent over backwards to bury the rest, and I think that's a missed opportunity. Since I'd already placed my order at that point, I didn't even want to look through whatever else they had. Had they shown me the breakfast, the treats, the sides, the a la carte, any of that stuff up front, I might have ordered other things for the review to give you an even broader look at their service. It's also kind of deceptive because not a single thing displayed or mentioned any of their other products until after my order was placed. I clicked through every page on the site and I still legitimately thought that what I saw was all they had. Even when I noticed that the FAQs call the weekly meal plan their main offering, I never saw anything else, so I assumed that whatever else they had maybe wasn't available. Available yet. Then magically, after my order was done, there it all was. That soured me on the experience a lot. Speaking of sour, the second major thing I need to mention is that one of their meals made me sick. I won't go into details, but let's just say it turned my stomach into a revolving door. Now, keep in mind that the internet is the definition of seek and ye shall find. That's literally the purpose of a search engine, to show you what you look for. So no matter what service you're researching, you can find someone who got food poisoning from it or had some other quality control concern. That's why I won't present this unfortunate turn of events as if Cook Unity is uniquely problematic. I haven't used their service enough to know how frequent this issue is. That said, the fact that I haven't had this happen to me with any other service yet, coupled with the fact that I've only ever had food poisoning once before in my entire life, throupled with the fact that they prepare things in a communal commercial kitchen, makes me feel like they maybe need to be even stricter about food safety. Just saying. For what it's worth, they did provide me with a refund for the questionable meal and were very proactive about wanting to make things right. Beyond that, I enjoyed the meals that stayed inside of me, and they have some cool features on the site, like being able to set up separate preferences for you and your partner, a history of your liked and disliked meals, and an overview of your nutritional totals for the week. Though your mileage may vary with that, since the word on the street is that their nutritional info may not be all that accurate. I couldn't tell you one way or the other, so if you're following a strict diet, maybe research that more for yourself. And I really do love the concept because it really did feel and taste more like ordering lunch from a little restaurant than like I was ordering some mass manufactured concoction or a glorified frozen dinner passed off like something fresh. 
As for the price, I say the same thing in all of these reviews. As someone who cooks 90% of the time and is very frugal when it comes to my grocery shopping, like I'm not in here with these coupons, these coupons are in here with me. All of these services cost more per meal than I typically spend, so I wouldn't use any of them without the discounts. But I do think Cook Unity is one of the cheapest I've tried so far, keeping in mind that each meal was one serving. So I paid less than $6 per serving here with the discount, and it would have been about $12 per serving full price, with the amount of food ranging from 11 to 17 ounces. Meanwhile, the cost per serving in previous reviews was closer to $10 with the discount, maybe $15 or more without, with the portions per serving being similar in weight. Still, when it comes to weight, it is unfortunate that what's printed on Cook Unity's packaging falls well under what it said on my scale, while the estimated weights for every other service I've tried skewed higher than what they stated. So there are ups and there are downs, but my final verdict is that if my icky situation didn't scare you off, Cook Unity is absolutely worth giving a shot, especially if you live somewhere where they offer an abundance of meals, because like a restaurant, what's on the menu can make or break the experience. It's been a week and I'm still thinking about those picadillo tacos and that Korean flank steak. They were so good. But let me know what your experience has been with Cook Unity. A link to their site is in the box. And if you haven't already, please vote in the poll in my community tab for which services you want me to try. Thanks so much for watching MBM and I'll see you snackies when I'm backies.